Hi, I'm Deke. Welcome to Deke Hot, my series of once every other weekly videos on computer graphics and digital imaging. This is my chance to ransack my closets of creative ideas without anyone looking over my shoulder saying, you got talent. You don't have to work blue. I hate it when people question my artistic passion, man. Jerks. Today's episode is the first of my stealth shop concepts, in which I'll try to show you how to apply a sequence of invisible edits in Photoshop under the radar, so no one, not even someone armed with a fine-tooth algorithm, knows you were there. This time in particular, I'll show you how to apply some radical color adjustments while leaving a smooth, virgin-like histogram in their wake. Self-imposed censorship. All right, let's talk about the image I'm gonna use. It's this guy here. I shot him in San Francisco, Pacific Heights, outside this like $12 million house. And I was pretty far away. Total telephoto shot, right? Stupid me, I thought it would be a cool picture to show my sons, who are very young and, and quite naturally super into robots. But once I opened the image in Photoshop, I was confronted by this gigantic, this dangling, this cable-like electrophallus. It takes up that entire censored area, it really does. I don't know why I'm so nervous about revealing it. I mean, all kinds of artwork include peckers. Take Leonardo's Vitruvian Man. He's got two. One limp, the other's poking out at you. But he's a classic. School children can ogle his pipe cleaners all they want. But if I were to show you a monstrous, pendulous robo-hose, you would wet your snuggies. Believe me, you would. I did. Let's just say he's more robot than you can handle. The protective covering is for your protection. Yes, you're welcome. Typical color correction. But the real problem with this image is not it's shockingly massive and entirely unnecessary genitalia. The real problem is that the photograph is underexposed and undersaturated. Photoshop gives you lots of ways to fix these problems, but whether you edit the photo flat or with adjustment layers, you risk shredding the histogram, which is tantamount to botching the image file's core cellular structure. Let me show you what I mean. First, here's the histogram palette. It represents the luminance levels, the brightness of the pixels in the image, from black to white. If I update it, see those spikes? Kind of phallic, don't you think? That's a compressed histogram. No camera or scanner delivers a crap histogram like this, so it's obvious I've already made changes to the image in Photoshop. It gets even worse if I fix the photo. For example, first I'll intensify the colors, then I'll use another command to increase the brightness and contrast of the image. Now look at the histogram. See those gaps? Those are luminance levels that have no pixels at all associated with them, which shows I modified the exposure, which means the image wasn't exposed properly in the first place, which means I suck as a photographer. I don't need anyone knowing that. I mean, I am deep, you know? Plus, a bad histogram means the image itself probably isn't in that great a shape. The modified image looks better, but not best. Better color correction. Here's the stealth approach. I'll revert the image, then I'll go up here and convert it from RGB to lab, a more flexible color mode that gives you more room to edit. No need to flatten in this case. Now bring up that command we used a moment ago. Fix the brightness and contrast. You can also fix the colors here. I'm gonna go nuts, really oversaturate the image, and warm it up a little in the B channel. Check out the new histogram. Real horror show, right? Ah, but convert the image back to RGB, and look at that. No gaps, very little in the way of spikes. That's almost a no-edit histogram. To seal the deal, reduce the size of the image slightly. That smooths out the color transitions and results in a histogram that's as smooth as a baby robot's ass flanges. That's a no-edit virgin histograms. I could have shot that. Was the switch to lab worth the extra work? Here's the original, here's the RGB correction, and here's the lab version. The last one is a little smaller, but size isn't really this guy's problem. The lab image looks better, it's smoother, less detectable, so lab is the better approach. Give the people what they want. All right, so a new wrinkle. As much as it may repulse some of you, our market research indicates that there's a pretty large demographic that would like to see me reveal the robot's enormous coil. So for those of you who aren't sure you want to see, I mean, just take a look at the size of those cans. If you're not up for it, ugh. Well, consider this your warning, because here it comes. On a countdown, okay? Three, two, one. Hey, check it out. It's not an oversized anatomical detail. It's a bee. It's a friendly, glowing bumblebee. Come on now. Wouldn't life be simpler if we all fertilized that way? Conclusion. When you start off promising a big robo-rod and you don't deliver, people are grateful and everything, but you risk credibility. So I'm gonna get real with you. It's the results that count. Correcting colors in lab gives you lots more flexibility. You can pump the saturation through the roof, and it's a stealth edit. That bee could have been there. Certainly accounts for the dude's expression. I know a lot of people are wary of the lab mode, and I hope by associating it with an insect attacking a robot right in the nads, I've taken the edge off a little. If you're looking for more comprehensive training, in which I never mention robot genitalia not once, check out my videos at lynda.com slash deke, or my full line of one-on-one -on -one books at deke.oreilly.com. 
or go to my personal site, deek.com, which also contains the uncensored robot photo. And yes, that whole phallus thing, I was not making it up. It's quite evident. In the meantime, stay tuned for more videos. I have lots more creative sprouts to feed your eager brains here at DeekPod.